Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see you today. And tonight I'm going to be talking about a different way of looking at conflict. When I lived in Scotland for seven years, I was a volunteer for the Scottish Centre of Conflict Resolution. And I was part of their training team, but I learned so much from them. And so today we're going to share this with you. So this is going to be a different look at conflict. Probably an approach that you haven't heard of before. And yet you will probably be familiar with most of what I will say. So we will learn how to use ideas that we already have and apply them to help us with conflict. There's an interesting story in the Bible. The story of David and Nabal and Abigail. Istoria apie Dovida, Nabala ir Abigaila. And we find it in 1 Samuel 25. Istoria užrašyta pirmoje Samuelio knygoje 25 skyriuje. And actually when we look at this story, it can tell us a lot about how to manage conflict. Kai mes skaitome šitą istoriją, šitą istoriją atveria mums akis, kad mes suprastume, kaip valdyti, kaip išspręsti konfliktus. So we find a man called Nabal, who's really foolish and selfish and proud and greedy. And David goes to him and asks him, please, could he have some food to share with his men? It's actually a time of year when landowners would share their food and help their workers have a feast. And David and his men have been protecting Nabal's flocks and Nabal's um, shepherds for a long time. Nabalo ir kaimenė ir kaimenės vyrus. Can I ask someone, everyone, to turn their mic off, please, and mute? Ar galiu paprašyti, kad jūs išjungtumėte mikrofoną? Because we have a lot of extra noise. Kadangi girdėsi daug triukšmo. Okay, thank you. That's nice. Ačiū, ačiū. So David has been helping Nabal and been really and protective of him, but Nabal is furious. He's rude to David and he refuses to share anything with them. David is actually probably not in the best place in himself. He's struggling emotionally himself. Because his best friend, Samuel, has just died. One of his advisors and friends has died. 
Tuo metu vienas iš geriausių jo draugų, Samuelis, miršta. Tai Samuelis buvo ta žmogus, kuris patkardavo Dovidui. So David is so furious with Nabal's selfishness that he wants to kill everyone in his household. Dovidas taip pasiją, taip pasijunta blogai, kad jis nori viską iš kiekvieno, kuris yra Nabalo namuose, išžudyti. But fortunately, Nabal has a very wise wife. Laimiai, Nabalas turėjo labai išmintingą žmoną. And I imagine she might have done a lot of peacemaking in her life. Ir aš tikiu, kad ji savo gyvenime buvo taik darė. Trying to keep the neighbors happy after her husband has insulted and annoyed them. Ar jis stengiasi išlaikyti su kaimynais taiką, kai Nabalas pasielgdavo nepratingai? And Abigail decides to take everything, all the food she can find, to David and to plead for their lives. Abigailė nusprendžia paimti maistą, kiek įmanoma daugiau, ir maisto, ir nunešti Dovidui taip pat maldauti dėl jų visų gyvybių. She does this as quickly as possible. Ji tai atlieka kiek įmanoma greičiau. And she meets David on the road. Jis susitinka su Dovidu pakeliui. And she kneels humbly before him and apologizes for her husband's behavior. Ji nusižemina prieš jį ir atsiprašo iš savo vyru elgesį. She speaks words of encouragement and kindness to David. Ji kalba Dovidui padrasinimo žodžius, malonius žodžius. She honors him and recognizes him as the future anointed king. Ji pripažįsta jį kaip ateities patepta karalių. And she's very wise. Ir ji labai išmintinga. She tells David, one day you will be king and you do not want to look back at this time when you killed my family with regrets. Ji sako Dovidui, vieną dieną tu tapsi karaliumi ir tu nenori, būdamas karaliumi, pažvelgti apgal ir prisiminti, kaip tu įžodėjai visą mūsų šeimą. And she appeals to him, make a better choice, make a kind of generous choice. Ir jį kreitėsi į jį ir prašo, kad jis padarytų išmintingą sprendimą. And it's Abigail's kindness, generosity, respect, wisdom that changes David's heart. Abigail's išmintis, gerumas, dosnumas pakeičia Dovido širdį. And he is so impressed with her courage and her grace. Jis taip jau Taip jaučiasi paveiktas jos drasa ir jos malonė. And she's also very beautiful, so when he discovers that her husband has died, he chooses to marry her. Taip pat Abigailė yra labai graži, ir kai Dovidas sužino, kad Nabalas miršta, jis paprašo jos tapti jo žmona. And so we can see that Nabal's behavior triggered a major conflict and Abigail's behavior calmed it down. Nes pastebime šitoje istorijoje, kad Nabalo elgesys tokėlį daug problemų, bet Abigailės elgesys sumažino išsprendį problemų. Jesus tells us, blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called the children of God. Jėzus sako, palaiminti taik dariai, jie bus vadinami Dievo vaikais. That is because God is the greatest peacemaker in the universe. Todėl, kad Dievas yra pats didžiausias taik darys visoje visatoje. And he is creating this wonderful bringing together to take away the conflict from the universe forever. Jis yra tas, kuris sutaikų žmonės ir nori, kad visam laiko iš visatus išmyktų konfliktai. It's the biggest, most daring and most loving dealing with conflict in the whole universe. Jis yra tas, kuris labiausiai mylinčių būdus išsprendžia konfliktus visatoje. 
So why be peacemakers? Whenever we make peace, we are helping people to see what God is like. And when they see us making peace, they say, ah, oh, they must have a very loving and kind and peaceful God. Conflicts lead to broken relationships, poor mental health, and even homelessness. And it's the, the major reason why people don't stay in our church. And the research in the general conference shows this. So, what does it take to be a peacemaker? Because our character will make a difference. So think about these words on the screen and where you are on the line between pride and humility. Selfishness and generosity. Critical and judgmental or accepting, forgiving and loving. And we can see that all of these things on the left side cause more conflict. Behind most conflicts are these characteristics. But the ones on the right help to lower conflict. At least that's the left and right as I see them. I'm hoping it might be different for you. So, um, but you, can, you know the ones that are helping you to reduce your conflict and the ones that will cause more conflict. So the role of conflict in people leaving the church, any church really, um, so 62% say the main reason for leaving their church is conflict related. And the second highest reason for people leaving the church um, is also 31% connected with conflict. And even when you move down to the third reason why people leave the church, it's still 32% related to conflict. So we need to recognize that conflict is actually really normal in relationships. And it's because we're all uniquely different and we have different personalities, different goals, different needs. And actually, the more loving and warm our relationships are, the less we'll have challenging conflicts. And the more we manage our conflicts well, the closer we feel together. 
tinkamiau mes išsprendžiame konfliktus, tuo artimiau mes jaučiamės vieną su kitu. So my husband is also a family therapist and a pastor. Mano vyras taip pat yra šeimos terapeutas ir pastorius. And we've been married for 38 years. Mes esame kartu 38 years. 38 metai mes esame kartu. And we still have some little conflicts. Mes tiek mes turime mažus konfliktus. Because actually we're totally opposite personalities. Kadangi mes esame visiškai skirtingos asmenybės. But we deal with those conflicts in ways that mean they don't last very long and we quickly sort them out. Mes sprendžiame mūsų konfliktai nesitėsi ilgai, mes sprendžiame tos konfliktus. And when we when someone says what's the last thing you had a conflict about, we just can't remember. Kai kas nors mūsų paklausė, kada paskutinį kartą turėjote konfliktą, mes sakome jiems, mes neatsimename. Because our relationship is strong and loving and we just... Mūsų santykiai yra mylintis, stiprus. And so, um, but if I, if we see a couple that is very troubled, Jeigu mes, mes pamatome porą, kuri turi problemų and they come to us for help, ir ateina pas mus paprašo pagalbos, they can tell you every detail of an argument they had a month ago. Jie gali taip smulkmeniškai išvardinti kiekvieną detalę konfliktų, kurį turėjo praėjusį mėnesį. Every little detail. He said, she said, he did, she did. Kiekvieną mažą detalę prisimena. Jis pasakė tą, jinai padarė tą, jis pasakė tą. Because they are so distressed, the adrenaline makes sure they remember every detail. Kadangi jie paveikti, adrenalino taip paveikti, kad jie prisimena kiekvieną detalę. So conflicts are usually quite complex and messy. Konfliktas yra sudėtingas ir netvarkingas dalykas. There's really simple solutions. Retai būna paprastos išėjtės. Because all kinds of things that we know about and even that we don't know about affect how we have our conflicts. Įvairus žinomi ir nežinomi faktoriai prisideda prie to, kaip mes patirėme ir valdome konfliktus. But I'm going to tell you some things today that are likely to help you reduce the amount of conflicts in your life. Šiandien aš noriu su jumis pasidalinti tai, kas padėtų jums atrasti ir sumažinti konfliktus. Mes esame visi labai skirtingi. And we can only do our part Um, in a conflict, we're not responsible for the other person, so they may not be as um, uh, they may not manage it as well as we might manage it. So there's some basic conflict styles. So there is directing, controlling. Yra nurodantis, kontroliuojantis tipas. I'm going to win and you are going to lose. Aš laimėsiu, tu pralaimėsi. When that's our attitude, we break relationships. Kai toks yra požiūris konflikte, santykiai šyra. Our need to win is more important than our need to care for the other person and respect them. Aš turiu laimėti toks požiūris, toks požiūris, negu kitas žmogus man labiau rūpi. And we build up resentment, distrust and fear. Tuomet atsiranda apmaudas, nepasitikėjimas, baimė. Then there is an avoiding approach to conflict. Toliau yra vengimas, konflikto tipas vengimas. 
I lose and you lose. Aš pralaimiu ir tu pralaimiu. And so there's a pile of unresolved conflict between us and a silent coldness. Konfliktai neištriesti, santykiuose tila ir šaltumas. And then we have harmonizing. I lose and you win. I will let you win. Toliau yra pasiduodantis. Aš pralaimėsiu, tu laimėsi. And this is fine if we make that choice, but if it happens too often, it's unbalancing in the relationship. Jeigu jūs taip pasirenkate, tam tikrą laiką yra gerai, bet jeigu visuomet jūs pasiduodate, tada santykiai yra nesubalansuoti. And the one that is allowed to win may believe that they can always win, it's their right, and that's not helpful. Ir jeigu mes leidžiame kitam žmogui visada laimėti, mes galvojame, kad šitas žmogus turi laimėti ir tai nėra sveikas dalykas. In the middle, there is compromising. Lentelis viduryje yra kompromisas. I can win some and you can win some. Aš laimiu truputį, tu laimi truputį. But then we might become competitive. Tada vyksta santykiuose lenkti nevimas. Well, you won the last three, so it's my turn now, whatever the issue. Tu laimėjai paskutinius tris konfliktus. Dabar mano eilė. And then there is collaborating. This is the best way. Ir po to bendradarbiavimo tipas. Tai yra pats geriausias tipas. It's when we care for the relationship and we care that both of us leave this happy. Mums lūpi santykiai ir mes abu norime būti laimingi. So we need to talk things through and work them out together. Mums reikia skirti laiko ir aptarti kartu dalykus. It takes time, but we grow in our understanding of each other and our ability to care for each other. Tai trūks laiko, bet tame mes saugame, mes rūpinamės vienas kitu. And the more we care for each other, and are kind to each other, the less conflicts we will have. Kuo labiau mes rūpinamės vienas kitu, kuo labiau mums rūpi kita žmogus, tuo mažiau konfliktų. So, quite often, when you've heard things about conflict resolution, it's about how do we fix a conflict that has happened. Kaip, ką daryti, kad konflikti įvyksta konfliktas, Kaip jį sumažinti, kaip jį spręsti. So we've had a fight, and now how do we make peace again? Įvyko kova, įvyko konfliktas, kaip dabar tą konfliktą išspręsti, kad būtų ramybės, kad būtų tai ką. But I'm going to focus on how can we be proactive about creating a healthy relationship where conflict is less likely. Mano tikslas, aš sutelkiu dėmesį taip, kaip aš galiu būti proaktyvus, kaip aš galiu sukurti tokius santykius, kad konfliktų tikimybė mažėtų. Because this is actually the way of relating that the Bible tells us about. Būtent tas būdas konflikto, būdas apie kurį ir kalba Biblija. All the principles that help to reduce conflict in relationships are principles that we find in the Bible. Visi principai, kurie padeda sumažinti konfliktus, yra užrašyti Biblijoje. And it's much better for us to try and nurture the relationships where conflict is less likely than to mend them once they've happened. Daug geriau puosėlėti šiltus gerus veikus santykius, kur konfliktų tikimybė bus nedideli negu turėti konfliktus ir po to spręsti juos. And we also need to live these out in our life and teach them to our children, to our young people, to our young couples, so that they can learn these skills too. Mes tos principus pirmiausia turime pritaikyti savo gyvenime, paskui mokyti kitus, mokyti vaikus, mokyti jaunimą, kaip spręsti konfliktus. So in English we say prevention is better than cure. Fix something, fixing something before it happens is better than trying to cure it afterwards. Anglų kalboje yra toks pasakymas. Apsauga, geriau 
padaryti viską, kad tas konfliktas neįvyktų, negu spręsti patį konfliktą, jau įvykusi konfliktą. So there was a lady called Sue Johnson who studied couples having arguments for about 20 years. Moteris vardus jų Johnson, kuris 20 metų studijavo konfliktus. I would not like to do her research. Aš nenorėčiau atlikti tokius tyrimus. And she was thinking, why do these couples who have loved each other so much have such terrible fights? Ji galvojo, kodėl tos poros, kurios taip myli vienas kitą, turi konfliktų, kovoja vienas su kitu. And what she found out is that they were very rarely fighting about the thing they thought they were fighting about. Tai, ką jie atrado, buvo kažkas tai naujo. Jos atradina, dėl ko žmonės kovoja, dėl ko vyksta konfliktai. So it sounds like they're fighting about money, about the chores in the house, about bringing up the children. Mes galvojame, kad žmonės konfliktuoja dėl pinigų, dėl namų, dėl vaikų. But she found out that underneath they're asking some really important questions, but without using these words. Savo tyrimuose jį atrado įsiaiškino, kad po tais konfliktais slypis svarbus klausimai. She found these couples were really asking, do you love me, do you care about me, do you appreciate me? Tyrimai parodė, kad šitos poros, kurios konfliktuoja, jos klausė klausimus. Ar tu mane myli? Ar tu rūpinės manim? Ar tu vertini mane? And they were asking these questions. They were fighting because they wanted to know how much the other person really cared. Jie kovoja tarpusavėje, jie konfliktuoja, norėdami išsiaiškinti, kaip labai kitas žmogus rūpinasi manimi. Another question they were asking is, are you able to understand what I'm feeling right now? Can you understand? So when we love someone, we want them to know what we're feeling. And if they don't understand that, then we feel very hurt and scared. Kai mes mylime kitą žmogų, Mes norime, kad jis taip pajaustų, bet kai jis tai nejaučia, jis jaučia baimę, jis išsigasta. Then they're also asking, are you willing to help me? I'm struggling with this. Are you willing to come and help me with it? Taip pat jie nori įsiaiškinti, ar tu nori ir gali man padėti, kai man sunku, kai man tavęs reikia? Are you willing to bear my burdens with me? Ar tu pasiruošęs nešti mano naštas kartu su manimi? And the other big question they're kind of asking underneath the conflict is, are you committed to me? Will you always love me? Can I trust you? Kitas labai svarbus klausimas, kuris lypi po konfliktais yra, ar tu visuomet būsi šalia? Ar aš galiu tavim pasitikėti ir priklausyti nuo tavęs? You see, when we live in ways that will answer these big questions for each other, We are so much less likely to have a conflict. Kai mes gyvename taip, kad mes atsakytumėm į tuos svarbius klausimus, didelį tikimybę, kad tų konfliktų sumažės. So when we're meeting each other's relational needs and showing that we care, we're creating these strong bonds between us. Kai mes patenkiname vienas kito santykių reikmes, mumėse mes susijungiame, tarp mūsų atsiranda stiprus ryšys. And the more of these bonds, the more we feel loved and connected, the less we will argue with each other. Kuo labiau mes jaučiamės mylimi ir jaučiamės, kad mumis rūpinasi, tuo mažiau mes ginčiasime, skovosime. And so because there is a caring relationship in a very loving couple, they will have conflicts, but they won't be nasty, they won't be vicious and hurtful. 
Laimingo šeimos vis tiek turės konfliktų, bet jie bus mažiau žalingi ir turės mažiau ilgalaikių pasiekmių. Because they know they are loved and understood and cared for and supported and committed to. Nes jie žino, kad jie yra mylimi, kad jie yra rūpinamas, kad jie palaiko, vienas kitą palaiko. It's also really important, as the Bible says, to repair a conflict before bedtime. Taip pat yra labai svarbu, kai Biblioje parašyta, kad mes išspręstumėm konfliktus prieš einant mėgoti. Because when we don't mend it and each of us sleep on that pain, it then goes deeper into our brain with the memories of the day. Kai mes einame mėgoti, neišsprendė konfliktų, visas tas konfliktas, kuris sukelia skausmą, įsirašo į mūsų smegenį, Į mūsų smegenis tuo metu, kai mes mėgame. And that can lead to anxiety, depression and reactions that can cause more conflicts later. Ir tai veda į depresiją, į nerimą, į tuos dalykus, kurie vėliau sukels konfliktus. So what can we do? Ką mes galime padaryti? Well, be loving and kind as often as possible. The more often we are kind, the less likely we are to argue. Būkime malonus ir mylintis. Kuo labiau mes parodysime malonę ir būsime mylintis, tuo mažiau bus konfliktų. Speak and act and think kindly and that will really help. Kalbėkime ir veikime malonį. Because when we actually do acts of kindness for the other person, They can see and feel and the love that we have in our hearts. Kai mes darome tuos malonius, malonius veiksmus, žmonės pamato, kad mūsų širdėse yra meilė. And we all need those little kindnesses. They really help to bond a healthy relationship. Mums visiems reikia malonių veiksmų, nes tie malonus dalykai sujungia mūsų santykiais And the more often we say thank you to each other and appreciate each other, the less conflicts we will have. Kuo dažniau mes sakome ačiū, kuo dažniau mes įvertiname vienas kitą, tuo mažiau konfliktų bus. So try this, try doing more acts of kindness, try saying thank you more often in, in creative ways. Bandykime, bandykime kuo, kuo dažniau pasakyti ačiū, kuo dažniau atlikti tuos malonius dalykus, malonius veiksmus, vertinti vienas kitą. And see whether your relationship feels more peaceful and loving and there is less conflict. Ir patikrinkime, ar dar ant tuos dalykus mūsų santykiai bus ramesni, mūsų santykiai bus stipresni. These are two of my grandchildren. Čia mano anukai. And big sister Zara is trying to be understanding and empathic towards her little brother Max. Vyresnioji Sara bando suprasti savo mažai broliuką Maxą. So that means we listen to other people's feelings and we show that we understand them and we care about them. Kai mes įsiklausome į kitą žmogų, įsiklausome į jo jausmos, ką jisai jaučia, mes leidžiame jiems suprasti, kad mes rūpinamės jais. And as Paul says, be sad with those who are sad and be happy with those who are happy. Connect emotionally. Paulius rašo, verkite su verkinčiais ir džiaukite su besidžiaugiančiais. And then we can be helpful, share the big tasks in life together, bear one another's burdens. Mes taip pat galime padėti vienas kitam, kai mes dalyjomis našta vienas su kitu. Kaip sako, nešiokime vienas kito naštas. If you can ask as often as possible, how can I help you today and do it? Jeigu jūs galėtumėte kiek įmanoma dažniau paklausti, kuo galėčiau padėti kitiems? We'll do the nasty jobs together so that no one is feeling burdened by them. Tos užduotis kurios jums nepatinka arba kitiems nepatinka, darykime kartu. Something else that causes conflicts to escalate is if we 
feel like the other person may abandon us and leave us. Jeigu mes jaučiamės nesaugos santykiuose, jeigu mes galvojame, kad kitas žmogus gali palikti mane, tai taip pat sukelia konfliktus. So we have to let people know, I am here for you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm committed to you. Leskite žmonėms žinoti, kad jūs esate šalia, kad jūs esate įsipareigojęs ir kad jūs nepaliksite kito žmogaus. And don't do anything that will make someone feel afraid of you. Nedarykite ir nesakykite tai, kas priverstų kitą jūsų bijoti. Because perfect love, says the Bible, calls out fear. Biblija sako, tobola meilė išėja baimę. But you know, even when we try our best, there are some people who still want to have a fight. Bus tokių situacijų, jei mes ir išbandyme viską, kas priklauso nuo mūsų, vis tiek bus žmonių, kurie norės ginčyti su mumis kovoti. So David and his men have been kind to Nabal, they've been helpful, they've been protective. They were committed to helping them. Dovidas ir jo vyrai buvo malonus, dosnus, jie saugo, jie padėjo Nabalo vyrams ir kaimenai. They had done everything they could to keep Nabal happy and avoid a conflict. Jie padarė viską tam, kad Nabalas būtų laimingas ir kad jie išvengtų konflikto. But Nabal was so stupid, he did not appreciate this. Bet Nabalas buvo toks kvailas, kad jis neįvertino tai. So there are people that no matter how hard we try, just want to have a conflict and we'll try and fight with everyone. Mes pastebėsime, kad bu žmonių, nes varbu kaip mes besistengtumėm dėl jų, vis tiek atsira žmonių, kurie ginčiasis, kurie norės kovoti su mumis. And those people have often got deep hurts in their lives that they need to um, maybe go to counseling or have some healing for. Dažniausiai tie žmonės turi gilę žaizdas viduje ir galbūt jiems reikia pagalbos eiti pas konsultantą, kad padėtų išspręsti. And God calls us to be the peacemakers. Jie vas kviečia mus būti taik dareis. And we need to think, how much of a peacemaker am I? Ir mums reikia pamastyti, o koks taik darys aš esu? What are my relationships like with other people? Kokie mano santykiai su kitai žmonėmis? Am I always fighting, are we always fighting together? Or do I find ways to bring people together in joy and peace and love? Ar aš esu tarp tų, kurie nuo latos kovoja? Ar aš esu ta žmogus, kuris sutaiko kitus žmonės. So how conflict escalates? Kaip atsiranda konfliktai? So when we experience something like David did from Nabal, kai mes patyrime kažką panašaus, kai Dovidas patyri bendrojant su Nabalu, Nabal was rude and critical and greedy, nasty. Nabalas buvo Rūbus, kritikuojantis. When we experience a person like that, it makes us feel stressed and anxious in our brains. Kai mes patirėme visą tai, mūsų smegenims yra, nes mūsų smegenis jaučia nerimą. And the cortisol, the stress hormone, and the adrenaline, they pour into our brains. Ir tada mūsų smegenis Mūsų smėginis simuliuoja adrenalina, išsiskiria. And then what happens is that we are more likely to become, to shout, to hurt each other, to fight. Ir tada mūsų smėginis išskiria kurtizolį, tai yra stresų hormonai, ir mes greičiau tampame agresyvų žodžiais, mes kovojame, mes įžeidinėjame. Because when we are stressed and anxious, It's like a shutter comes down and we can't access the thinking part of our brain. Kai mes patirime nerimą, kai mes patirime stresą, nerimą, tada užsidaro tas kelias, kad mes pasiektumėm tą smegenų dalį, kuri masto. 
And then when our conflict levels are raised, it's much harder to think about what other people need and have empathy or listen to them. Kai jau mes esame konflikte, yra daug sunkiau suprasti, ką kita žmogus jaučia, ką kita žmogus sako. And I know that when I'm working with couples who are fighting, they don't really listen to each other. Ir aš žinau iš patirties, kai man tenka dirbti su poromis, kurios kalvoja, aš pastebėjau, kad jos neklauso viena kitos. They stop caring about each other's feelings. Kie nustoja rūpintis vienas kito jausmais. They start to think about what can I say next to win over the other person. Jie galvoja apie tai, ką aš turėčiau dabar pasakyti, koks būtų Koks turėtų būti mano sekantis žingsnis, kad aš nugalėčiau kitą? And they forget to see that the other person is a child of God like them. Bet jie pamiršta pamatyti, kad kitas yra taip pat Dievo vaikas. And so once we get into this state, it's much harder for us to be nice to people and to be kind and unselfish. Kai mes jau esame tame lygyje, kortizolio lygyje, yra labai sunku pastebėti kitus žmonės. And this is what happens to David when Nabal is so rude and aggressive to him. Taip nutiko ir Dovidui, kai Nabalas elgėsi grubiai ir nemaloniai. And David loses touch with his own wisdom and love and care. Ir tada Dovidas praranda, praranda susisiekimą su savo išmintimi, su savo meilį, rūpeiščiu. And he just thinks, I'm just going to kill a whole lot of them. Ir tada jis galvoja, aš visus juos išžudysiu. He's really in a bad way. Iš tikrųjų, jis elgėsi blogai. But the good news is that Abigail knew how to fix that state. Bet gera žinai yra kad abigailė žinojo, kaip visą tai išspręsti. Maybe she learned it from years living with Nabal. Galbūt, jinai gyvendama daugelį metų su Nabalu išmoko to. And I imagine everyone in her household loved Abigail. She was the kind and wonderful one when Nabal was just so foolish and aggressive. Aš tikiu, kad tuose namuose visi mylėjo abigailė, nes jį buvo tokia rūpestinga, tokia mylinti, palyginu su Nabalu, kuris buvo kvailys ir grubus. And when we show empathy for the other person, when we say, oh, that sounds like you're really upset, that sounds like you're really angry, how can I help you? Kai mes parodome empatiją kitam žmogui, kai mes pasakome, o, atrodo, kad tu nuliūdės, atrodo, kad tu kažką jauti. When we can hold on to our compassion for the other person, to be kind in spite of their conflict. When we can be caring and supportive and appreciative. This wonderful hormone, oxytocin, falls all over our brain. Tuomet mūsų smegenys išskiria hormoną oksitoksiną. And we feel saved, happy, loved and loving. Ir mes tada jaučiame saugus, laimingi, mylimi. And when we're in this state, we can think about the rational thoughts, our caring thoughts, our reflective thoughts. Kai mes esame tame lygyje, tada mes būtume. Galime mąstyti racionaliai, mūsų smegenys gali atspindėti, suprasti kitus. And then we can do what Abigail did. We can respond wisely, kindly, creatively and humbly. Ir tada mes galime pasielgti taip, kaip pasielgė Abigailį. Mes galime atsakyti išmintingai, maloniai, kūrybingai. And we can see how quickly she calms David down and helps him to make a better choice. Mes galime pastebėti, kaip greitai Abigailį nuramina Dovidą ir padeda jam padaryti profingesnį sprendimą. And I wonder where we are in that story. Nu, kur mes esame šitoje istorijoje? 
There's perhaps a bit of each person in all of us. Kiekviena iš mūsų gyvena tie asmenys. Tam tikra prasme, kažkiek tu asmenų. There's sometimes when we're grumpy and aggressive like Nabal. Mes kartai selgėmės kaip Nabalas ir agresyvus ir grūbus. Maybe like David, we, we, we think well, we're wise most of the time. Galbūt mes galvojame kaip Dovidas, visada išmintingi. Nu, okei. But when we're going through a difficult challenge, as David was, he was more vulnerable to, um, to losing control of his wisdom and, and kindness. Išmintingi kaip Davidas Malonas, bet kai mes susidorėme su kokią nors situaciją, kokią kritinę situaciją, mes tampame jautros ir mes tada prarandame mūsų išmintingumą ir malonumą. He was grieving the loss of Samuel. Jis Jis apgailėstavo, jis išgyveno Samuelio praradimą. He was a fugitive from Saul. Jisai slapstėsi nuo Saulios. He had hundreds of men who were hungry. Jis su jo buvo šimtais vyrų, kurie buvo alkani. And all these stresses came together and made it harder for him to respond well to Nabal. Ir visą tai susidėjo į vieną krūvą stresą ir jam buvo nelengva padaryti išmintingą sprendimą. But there's something of Abigail in all of us that we can also access. Bet kažką, ką padarė Abigailė, mes taip pat galime padaryti. Because it's not that hard to do small, kind things for others. Nėra taip sunku padaryti kažką malonaus kitam. To slow down and listen and care about other people's feelings. Sustoti ir įsiklausyti į kito žmogaus jausmos. To say thank you and appreciate others as often as possible. Pasakyti ačiū ir įvertinti kitą žmogų kiek įmanoma dažniau. To kindly offer to help those around us who are struggling. Maloniai pasiūlyti savo pagalbą tiems, kurie kurie yra šalia mūsų ir kurie kovoja, kurie eina per sunkumus. And to let the people know that we love very much, I will never leave you, just as God says that to us. Neskite žmonėms žinoti, kad jūs juos labai mylite ir kad jūs niekada jų nepaliksite. There's some other things that can help us to difficult situations. Yra kiti dalykai, kiti būdai, kurie gali mums padėti, kai mes susidurėme su sunkiomis situacijomis. There are times when we need to say something in our relationship and we're not sure how the other person will respond. Yra laikas, kada mes norime kažką pasakyti kitam žmogui ir mes nežinome, kaip kita žmogus sureaguos. But it's important that each, that each person feels they can, they're safe enough to bring up their concerns, their ideas, their requests with the other person. Bet yra labai svarbu, kad kita žmogus jaustusi saugus, kai jis kalba apie savo problemas, kai jis kalba apie situacijas. So it helps to choose a time when you're both going to be relaxed. Pasirinkite tokį laiką, kuris tik tu jums abiems, kad jūs būtumėte atsipalaidavę. Because now you know that you will have a much more helpful conversation when you both are filled with oxytocin than cortisol. Jūs žinote, dabar jūs žinote, kad jūs turėsite daug malonesnį, daug šiltesnį pokalbį, jeigu jūsų smegenys bus išskyrę oksitoksinį tosina, negu kortizolį. So the more that we can talk about these, talk about our issues warmly and kindly and safely, then we're less likely to argue. Kuo maloniau, kuo šilčiau mes kalbėsime apie mūsų iššūkius, tuo mažiau konfliktų duos. Maybe someone will say, I want to talk about this right now, and you've never had time to think about it. Galbūt jūs jaučiatės, netikėtų už pultas. Jūs galbūt nesate pasiruošę kalbėti apie tai. 
the conversation will probably go better if you do have some time to think about it and to and to be ready for a good conversation rather than be ambushed. Pokal vis bus geresnis, jeigu jūs kiršite laiko ir jūs pagalvosite apie tą pokalbį, negu jūs pradėsite tą pokalbį netikėtai už pultas. So you might say, I can see important to you. I'd really like to think about it and perhaps we can talk about it tomorrow. Jūs galite pasakyti, aš noriu jums tai pagalvoti, aš matau, kad tai svarbi tema, tema tau ir mes apie tai galime pasikalbėti rytoj. And start the conversation warmly. Let the other person know that you care about them. Um, do something loving and kind. Speak warmly. Pradėkite pokalbį šiltai, leiskite kitam žmogui matyti, kad jums rūpi kitas žmogus. Pradėkite nuo kažko šilto. And express your concerns in a kind and non-judgmental way, rather than blaming the other person. Išreiškite savo susirūpinamą, savo rūpesti maloniu būdu, neteisintis, nesmerkintis. And I will tell you how to do that in a little while. Ir netrukus aš su jumis pasidalinsiu, kaip tai padaryti. But this is the kind of approach that Abigail and Jesus and other people had when they were dealing with people. Taip elgesi ir Abigailė, ir Jėzus, kai jie bendravo, kai jie su kitais žmonėmis. The biggest message they each gave was, I care for you, you are important to me. Pati didžiausia žinia, pati... Maloniausia žinia, kurią jie bendraudami per duok perdavė, tai yra tokia. Tu man rūpi, tu man svarbus. Let's make this that we have even better. Padarykime tai, ką situacija netgi geresnė dar. We can change our voice. Mes galime pakeisti savo balsą. So when we speak lower and calmer, and slower, and maybe even whisper, then that really helps to lower the other person's stress and helps them deal with the conflict better. Kai mes nuleidžiame balso toną, kai mes kalbame ramiai, maloniai, netgi šnibždėdami, tai gali sumažinti konfliktą. Because this is what, these are the things that help the person to experience oxytocin that warms them up, rather than the cortisol and adrenaline that will get them ready to fight. And as the Bible says, a gentle answer turns away well. Šventasis rašto sako, švelnus atsakymas nuramina pykti. And then we need to listen well. O to mums reikia klausytis, ką kiti sako. And it helps if we listen carefully and sum up what the other person has said. Jeigu mes klausysime sidimiai, mes suprasime, ką kita žmogus sako. It sounds as if you, or so you're saying that. Mes galime naudoti tokias frasės, kad atrodo, kad tu Tu sakai, kad... Because when the other person knows that we've really heard them, and when we repeat their words back to them, then they feel, um, they feel calmed and heard, and that helps. Kai žmogus tikrai žino, kad jūs išgirdote, ką jisai pasako, ir kai jūs pakartojate tai, ką jisai pasako, Žmogus jaučiasi išgirsta, išgirstas, jis nusiramina. And they will agree with what we're saying, because it's what they said. Jie tada sutinga su mumis, nes jie išgirsta tai, ką jie pasakė. Yes, that's right, you've got, you've got it, you've understood me. Jie galbūt pasakys, tu supratai, tu išgirdai mane. And we find that when we do this, it will lower their stress. Kai mes tai darysime, mes sumažysime streso lygį. Sometimes when people come to see me and they want to talk a lot, 
I will write what they say down on paper so they can see what they've said. Kartais kaip žmonės ateina ir nori su manim pasikalbėti, jie kalba labai daug. Aš tuo metu surašau ant popieriaus lapo, kad vėliau jie pamatytų, ką jie pasakė. And I write it big on a piece of paper on the table so they can say, oh, I've said that, that's where I'm going, and it helps them. Aš parašau ant popieriaus lapo, kai padėtų ant stalų, po to jie pamatų, kai sako, jo, čia aš sakiau, taip, čia mano žodžia. As James says, be quick to listen. Jukubas rašo, pu greitas klausytis. Now this is my special way of talking about something clearly and respectfully and politely. Čia yra mano būdas, kaip kalbėti su kitų šiltai, mandagiai, pagarbiai. If I was to tell you to take a photograph of one slide, this would be it. Jeigu man reikėtų iš viso to seminaro, tu jumis pasidalinti vieną skaidrę, tai iš visų skaidrių šitą skaidrį būtų šitą. Because this is a pattern, an outline for a helpful conversation about an issue. Čia yra pavyzdys, kaip turėti gerą sveiką pokalbį. It stops us saying, oh, you always do that, you never do that. Mums reikia nuostoti sakyti, O, tu visą net taip darai, tu niekada to nepadarai. It stops us blaming the other person. Nustokime kaltinti vienas kitą. We're specific and clear and we talk about our feelings and our needs. Būkime tikslus ir aiškus, kai mes kalbame apie savo reikmes ir apie savo tikslus. So, when we were first married, occasionally I might... Nag Bernie, tell him, you should do this, or you haven't done that. Kai mes susitokėme su savo vyru, ne dažnai, bet kars nuo karto, aš tiesiog prie ką daudavau, prie jo sakydavo, o tu turi padaryti tą, tu turėtum padaryti tą. And I soon learned it wasn't a very good way to be. Ir aš pamačiau, kad tai nėra pats geriausias būdas. It wasn't great with my husband, it wasn't great with my kids. And if he spoke to me that way, I would get really resentful and angry. I might even feel a bit rebellious, like, I'm not going to do that because you want me to. Galbūt aš net maštaučiau ir pasakyčiau, aš nedarysiu vien todėl, kad tu tai pasakėjai. It was a really bad attitude. Tai yra blogas, buvo logas požiūris. But I grew wiser and I thought, how can I say what I want in a way that is clear and polite and loving? Bet aš augau ir tapau išmintingesnį ir aš pagalvoju, kaip aš galiu tai pasakyti, kad aš gaučiau tai, ko aš noriu. And it turns me from being nasty and grumpy into being kind and thoughtful and loving. Ir mane tai pakeitė, vietui prie ką bejančios ir nepatenkintus, aš tapau mylinti ir suprantantį. And I can honestly say, we have never had an argument when either of us starts and uses this kind of pattern for the conversation. Ir aš galiu sažiningai jums pasakyti, kai mes bendraujame pagal šitą pavyzdį, mes niekada neturime konfliktų. And when couples come to me for therapy, I say, there is no complaining here. If you want to say something about the other person, you have to use this pattern. Kai žmonės ateina pas mane, prašo pagalbos, aš jiems pasakau, kad čia nebus, kad čia su tame susitikime, jūs bendrausite vieną su kitu pagal šitą pavyzdį. So it's very specific. In this specific situation, when this specific thing happened, pradėti nuo to, kad reikia kalbėti, kad žmogus kalbėtų šitoje situacijoje, šitoje ypatingoje situacijoje, kaip tai atsitiko. I don't say, when you did. Aš nesakau, kad tu tai padarėjai. I will say, when this happened. Aš sakau, kai tai atsitiko arba atsitinka. So when I clean the kitchen floor, kai aš išvalau virtuvę, sutvarkau virtuvę, and someone walks over my clean floor with muddy 
muddy shoes. Ir kažkas mano pasinaudoja mano virtuvį šluostį ir balusi savo nešvarius batus. I feel frustrated and unappreciated. Aš jaučiuosi neįvertinta, aš jaučiuosi nusivylusi. Because I work hard to make it clean and then it's all undone again. Nes aš visą tai sutvarkiau ir vėl man reikės iš naujo daryti. So it would really help me if when you come home with muddy shoes, you leave them on the doorstep outside. Ir aš tuomet pasakau, man iš tikrųjų padėtų, jeigu tu, kai grįžti namo su purvinais batais, tuos batus paliktum už durų. Or you can put them in this bowl and bring them into the house to clean. Arba tu įdėk į tą indą, į tą dubenį ir įsineški namuose, po to namuose galėsi juos nuvalyti. And then I'll have more time to do fun things with you rather than clean the kitchen floor. Ir tada aš jam pasakau, jeigu tu taip pasielgsi, jeigu tu padarysi, tada aš turėsiu daugiau laikų su tavim smagiai laiką praleisti vietoj to, kad aš vėl valyčiau virtuvę. But this is just one idea. Čia yra tik viena įmintis idėja. And I wonder what ideas you have. Čia domau, kokias mintis, kokias idėjas jūs turite. It would help us to work this out together. Ir tai gali padėti mums išspręsti kartu. And when you try and speak like this with this kind of framework, you can see how it changes the conversation. Jeigu jūs pabandysite bendrauti pagal šitą modelį, pamatysite, kaip pasikeis situacija. I might also say, I'm really thankful for all the times you come in and you, and you, you know, you take your shoes off and you keep the floor clean. Ir aš galiu pasakyti, aš esu tokia dikinga, kai kiekvieną kartą, kai tu grįžti ir nusijimi, nusijauni batus, purvinus batus, ir man nereikia valyti. And so we can see that by changing how we say things, we can lower the conflict. Viskas priklauso nuo to, kaip mes pasakysime dalykus. Ir tai gali sumažinti konfliktus. Here are some other tips. Čia yra kiti patarimai. It's really good to be humble and admit your contribution to the problem, however small. Iš tiesų yra labai, labai išmintinga būti nusižeminusiam ir pasakyti, kad taip pat norite prisidėti prie problemo sprendimo. This says, this is our problem, we've both contributed to this, let's fix it together. Sakykime, kad tai čia mūsų problema, kalbėkime kartu apie tai. And the more we use the words like, this is our problem, and we can do this, and this is for us, and we use that language, then we are more likely to work together to solve it. Kai mes naudojame tokių žodžių, sakydami, kad čia mūsų problema, kad mums reikia įspręsti šitą problemą, mes lengviau užspręsime. And we can use our language carefully. If I say, you want this and I want this, let's find a way to do it together, that's much better than saying, I want this, but you want that, which pushes us afar, it makes us feel apart. Kai mes naudojame tokią kalbą, Aš noriu to ir tu nori to, yra daug geriau, negu aš pasakau, aš noriu to, bet ne no. So it's good to aim for win-win, the collaboration where we both get something we both like as a result. Gerai turėti tikslą, laimėti, laimėti, kad abu laimėtų. Remember, it's more important to protect a valuable relationship than to win an argument. Prisiminkime, kad yra daug svarbiu išlaikyti santykius negu laimėti ginčią. Because every time we win an argument with a spouse, a friend, a colleague, a church member, a child, a teenager, then when they lose, we break the relationship. Labai dažnai, kai mes ginčiami su draugų, kolega, su paaugliu ar su šeimos nariu, labai dažnai mes prarandame santykius. When we want to win and we're selfish about getting that 
that win that we want, then we can actually hurt people and push them away from us. I'm going to tell you a funny story about Bernie and I. So we were both studying family therapy at the same time. And our children were in their teenage years. And we thought, you know, it's really a good idea for children to experience their parents have calm and you know, to talk things through calmly and lovingly and work things out together. Because how will they learn how to manage their conflicts if they don't have some good role models like us? So occasionally we would choose what we thought was going to be a small conflict and talk about it at the dinner table with the children around us. And one day this didn't work. Somehow we completely forgot the children were there and we started to get louder and louder and more and more angry with each other. And suddenly our middle son, we have three, the middle one, the peacemaker, bangs on the table really loudly. Bang, bang. And he said, Mom, Dad, stop. You know better than this. You're acting like children. And he turned to my husband, Bernie. And he said, Dad, listen to mom with your heart. Listen to her feelings. And I'm thinking, go, son, you're amazing. And then he turns to me and mom. Mom, listen to dad with your brain. That has some really sensible things to say. <laughs> Do you know, no one in the family can remember what that argument was about. But Bernie and I learned something very important from our son. Because I was arguing from my heart about my emotions and Bernie was arguing from his brain about rational things. And we have both got so distressed, we had so much adrenaline and cortisol that we couldn't really listen. So it was stopping me being rational and thinking and wise. And it was stopping Bernie being empathic towards my feelings. Once you have triggered someone into the cortisol adrenaline part of an argument, 
to jūs sužalinote kortizolį. Or maybe you didn't trigger it, but that's where they that's where they are. Bet jeigu nors jūs ir galbūt nesužalinote, bet jūs patirėte tai. It can take about 40 minutes for that to calm down and to fade out of the body so they can engage the oxytocin again. Gali užtrūkti 40 minučių, kol jūsų smegenis galės racionaliai mąstyti ir kuris kur išskirs oksitoksiną. It's very important to listen to the emotions first and get them calmed down so that you can talk more rationally together. Labai svarbu įsiklausyti į emocijas, palaukti, kol jos norėjams ir tada kalbėti racionaliai. So we need to know how to calm each other down, how to soothe each other so that we can get into the place so we can talk better together. Mums reikia žinoti, kaip mes galime nuraminti vienas kitą, kad mes galėtume ramiai pasikalbėti. So in England, we'd make someone a cup of tea. Or just sit there, have a cup of tea, or go for a walk until you feel calm again. If it's appropriate, let the person know you care. Maybe touch them caringly or give them a hug if you think that's safe to do. Jeigu smalote, kad tai saugu, jūs galite savo partnerį apkabinti, Sometimes it helps to have a laugh. Kartais padeda tiesiog pasimylėjimas. And it's really important to make sure you're getting plenty of sleep because if we're not getting sleep or if we're having things that make our body more uptight, then it's harder for us to stay calm. Labai svarbu yra išsimėgoti, gerai išsimėgoti. Novargės gali mus greičiau sajarsinti ir įtraukti ginčius. And then how do we solve our problems? One idea that you've probably used at work is to make a list of all the possible solutions. And then each person uh, rates them out of 10. How good is this out of 10? Ir tuomet kiekvienas žmogus išrenka idėją iš dešimt idėjo sąrašų. You can say, Bernie might say that's an eight, and I might say it's a seven, and we can add them together, and that will score 15. Bernie gali pasakyti septynį, aš galiu pasakyti aštuoni, bendrai sudėjus jau gali būti penkiolika. This has even helped us to choose houses when we were moving. Čia padėjo mums pasirinkti namos, kai mes krauskimės iš vienas vietas į kitą. And then choose a possible solution, but just say, we're going to try this for a little bit and see what happens. Mes galime pasirinkti sprendimą, galime pasakyti, pabandykime tam tikrą laiką, pažiūrėsime kaip seksis. So maybe we try this for a week and then this idea for another week and see which works the best. Galbūt vieną savaitę pabandysime vieną idėją, kitą savaitę kitą, pažiūrėsime kaip tai veikia ir nuspręsime. Um, there is a man called uh, Jonathan Haidt who says this. He's written The Righteous Mind about why good people can be on opposite sides of an argument and fight. And this is his quote, you can read it. So he is saying, when you, when you meet someone who's got different ideas to you, don't just dive into an argument. Sako, 
Find something. Find something you have in common first. Some place where you can connect and find a bit of trust. And perhaps show them some appreciation for their ideas. And be kind to them, maybe buy them a drink while you're talking. So that even though we're talking to someone who has completely different ideas to us, we can have a healthy, happy conversation about that. Ellen White encourages us to solve church conflicts by sympathy, which is empathy, caring, tenderness, and love. Ellen White, Pater Mums, is pressed by Schnitcher's problem. So even before she knew all the research, she knew enough to know that when we're kind to each other, when we're loving, when we're appreciative and do all the things I said, that we'll have less arguments in the church. And she says, when you go to those who you think who you think are doing wrong, they may not be, it's just your thought. You must have a spirit of meekness and kindness and mercy. So when we're trying to solve a conflict between people, here are some ideas to help us with the process. So we can start with prayer. And then maybe we need to talk to each person separately in a conflict. Galbūt konflikte reikia pirmiausia pasikalbėti su kiekvienu žmogumi atskirai. And listen to their feelings and their story and their hopes. Išgirskime jų jausmus, jų istoriją, jų veltis. And then when you bring them both together after you understand what they both want, again, ask for each of them to share their hopes for the meeting. Kai po to, kai abu žmonės susitinka kartu, Padrasinkite juos, kad jie išsakytų savo veltis, savo iššaukius. And if possible, help them to find some common goals or hopes that they can see they both want. Ir jie įmanoma, leiskite jiems abiems atrasti bendras veltis. And then help... Bendrus, iš, bendrus sprendimus. And then give them the space to just speak while the other person listens. To, to speak um, what their needs, their side of the story is calmly and um, clearly. And it might be that you use the formula that I gave you before. And then help them to make a list of helpful solutions like we did just now. And to find one that they will both be happy with where possible. And then try that, see how it goes and come back and check it out. Pabandykite ir po to, po kiek laiko vėl susitikite su jais ir aptarkite, kaip jiems sekėsi. There some situations that are unresolvable. Kai kurios situacijos yra neišsprendžiamos. So say one, uh, one, the husband wants to go and live in America, but the wife wants to live in Europe. Sakykime, vyras nori važiuoti gyventi Amerikoje, o žmona nori pasilikti Europoje. 
and the husband has an amazing job in America. Ir vienas turi nuostabu darbą Amerikoje. The wife really doesn't want to go, but she goes with him because they're married and she wants to be with him. Aš <laughs> manai iš tikrųjų nenori važiuoti, bet jinai važiuojas vien dėl to, kad jinai myli jį, nori būti kartu su juo. But she's sad because her goals have been lost. Jį yra nuliūdusi, nusiminusi, nes jį prarado savo tikslus. Because you can't live in a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And when one of the persons in the relationship has to lose out, because sometimes that's how it is, the other one needs to be very compassionate and caring and do whatever it takes to make the other person feel happy. Kai situacija, vienas žmogus turi pasiduoti, vienas žmogus turi pralaimėti. Mes turime labai tas žmogus, kuris situaciją pralaimė, mes su jo turime elgti su žuojautą. So the person who's losing out needs a lot of care from the other person and creative ideas how they can um, get back to Europe often, etc. A žmogus, kuris situacijoje pralaimė, jam labai reikia suprasti, pamatyti, kad jo rūpinasi, padėti jam galbūt atrasti kažkokius sprendimus, idėjas. The good news is that when we learn to manage our conflicts well, it can actually bring us closer together. Gera žinia yra ta, kai mes išmokstame spręsti konfliktus, tuomet mus Because the goal is that we can listen to each other, listen to each other's needs and understand each other better. And when we do that, and when we can find unselfish ways that we can both win, it, it helps us to solve other problems well. Kai mes atrandame, išsiūkdome nesavanaudišką tikslą laimėti, laimėti, Tuomet mes išsprendžiame ir kitas problemas. And when we solve a conflict well, it makes us feel really good together. Kai mes teisingai išsprendžiam konfliktą, mes tada vienas su kitu jaučiamės gerai. Šalia vienas kitu jaučiamės gerai. And it strengthens our relationship and makes us feel more loving and kind to each other. Tai sustiprina mūsų santykius, mes tampame labiau vienas kitą mylintis. And that will in turn lower the amount of conflicts we have, help to lower them. But there's also the opposite circle where things will get worse and worse when we have painful conflicts. We have a conflict, we don't resolve it well, we come. We push further and further apart. We hurt each other, and in this circle, just gets bigger and bigger. Ah, conflict is vico. We don't spread it. We don't stand. Don't stand. We are not going to attend. We are going to be very angry. We are going to be very angry. But each of us can choose to wisely choose to do the things that will lower the conflicts and increase the loving kindness between us. Kiekvienas iš mūsų galime pasirinkti, išmintingai elgtis, kad mes sumažintumėm konfliktus. And this is what Jesus said. Štai, kai Jėzus pasakė. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, and now remain in my love. Kaip mane tėvas mylėjo, taip ir aš jūs mylėjau. Pasilikite mano meilėje. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Jei laikysitės mano įsakymų, pasiliksite mano meilėje, kaip kada aš vykdau savo tėvų įsakymus ir pasilieku jo meilėje. And then Jesus says, I have told you this about love, so that my joy may be in you. Jėzus sako, aš jums kalbėjau apie mano meilė, kad jums jis būtų manasis džiaugsma. Your joy can be in me. And your joy may be complete. Kad džiaugsmas, ir kad džiaugsmas jūsų džiaugsmui nieko netrūksiu. Labi. Labas, Danutė. Labas, labas. 
No, mi jelo to mužu da nuta. A čo, a čo? No, jedno, su ga jim dali ne praježe. Dekuj, 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 dekuj. Dekuj. Kaip gyvenas, kaip sveikatos? Nu, viskas kaip ir gerai. Atus va prasveika, aš atus sugavau dabar. Nu, atus. Nu, nu, aš negėjau suprat, kas negėjau, viskas papasakojau, viskas. Nu, nu. Tai mata, pas tave, pas tave rado, pas tave nerado. Nu, pas tave rado, pas tave nerado. Atsiprašau, bet mes negalime, kad nu vėsit, kad nu naro. Nu, gerai, kaip prasargau, kur kur viskas gerai. Aš savi. Aš dar biškirėlį. Aš neįsijungi mikrofonu. Temperatūras biš turėjo, bet ne laba daug. Jis yra, 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 jis yra. Karen? Yes. O, aš matau, aš nekėjau. Thank you. Mute. Tas buvk, labatrič, akrau, žminėsi. Ok. I finally muted them. Ok. O. Sorry about that. Thank you. Pagalio, mes nutildim. Kare nutildim. It happens. So, so my command is this, says Jesus, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus sako, mano įsakymas, mylėkite vienas kitą, kaip ir aš jūs mylėjau. And we need to keep filling ourselves up with this amazing love that God has for us. Mes turime pripildyti save tą nuostabę Dievo meilę, kurią Dievas And if we have not been so loved in our lives and that has causing us distress and making us feel unsafe in relationships, we can go back to God and let him love us. And finally, what can I do differently that can change the course of my conflicts? Ką aš galėčiau padaryti, kad mano konfliktus prie dimo būdai pasikeistų? Often we just think, oh, we don't have a choice. We just seem to get on this track and have the same old argument. O, mes galvojame, a, mes neturim pasirinkimo. Mes visą metą taip pat sprendžiame konfliktus. But you can choose. You can choose to do something different and see what happens when you care. Bet mes galime, mes galime pasirinkti, padaryti kažką kitaip ir pamatyti, kaip sprendžiasi konfliktus. How can I be, how can we be the peacemakers God is calling us to be? Kaip aš, kaip mes galėtume būti tokiu taikdariu, kokį Dievas pakvietė mus būti. And what can we do together to create warm, caring churches and families where hurtful conflicts are less likely. Ką mes galime padaryti kartu, kad sukurtume šiltas, besirūpinčias bažnyčias, šeimas, kur skaučių konfliktų būtų mažiau? Here are some resources that you might be able to find. Čia yra naudingi šaltiniai. Jeigu jums reikės pasinaudoti, jūs galite naudotis. Nečiaga, šaltiniai. And now let's pray. O dabar pasimelskime. Father God, we thank you for your incredible peacemaking towards us. Tėve, mylintis tėve, mes dėkojame tau už nuostabų sugebėjimą būti taip dariu. You're working so hard and so creatively and humbly and lovingly to bring us back to you. Tu dirbi taip sunkiai, taip kuri dingai, Taip pasižemė nusiai, kad norėdamas mūsų gražinti pas save. And to mend the brokenness that sin has caused. Ir išspręsti tą mūsų sužeistumą, kuri padarė nuodinė. Help us to come to you and learn from you how to bring peace and love and kindness into our relationships. Padėk mums ateiti pas tave ir pasižemė pasimti iš tavęs ir tą meilį, ir tą malonumą. And we bring to you all the broken relationships in our lives. Mes atnešame tau visus savo išyrusius santykius. Especially those that need mending. Ypatingai tuos, kuriuos reikia išgydyti. And we ask you to help us respond with love and kindness and appreciation and help and empathy and commitment 
Ir padėk mums viešpatė, padėk mums atsidvėkti, atsakyti ir su meilė, ir su išmintimi, ir su užuojauta, ir su įsipareigojimu. We thank you for your love for each of us and all of our brokenness. Ačiū už tavo meilę ir už visą mūsų sužeistumą. Help us to focus on your incredible love and fill our hearts up with it so we can share it with others. Padėk mums susikoncentruoti, sutelkti dėmesį į tavo neapsakomą meilę, pripildik mus ir padėk mums tą meilę dalinti su kitais. So our homes, our families, our churches can be places of peace and healing and love. Kad mūsų šeimus, mūsų bažnyčios, mūsų namai būtų pripildyti tavo meilę. Through Jesus' name, amen. Jėzus vardu, amen. Thank you. It's now time if you have some questions. Ačiū, dabar laikas klausimams. Everyone is very quiet. Is it feeling? You know, I, I learn from these seminars because I ask people, tell me something that you do that helps when you have a conflict. What do you do that helps? What do you do that helps to mend a relationship when it's got broken with an argument? Because I learned from all sorts of people different ideas that have helped me with this presentation. And even though I'm a family therapist, there is still so much I am learning about conflict and how to resolve things. But I was really excited to find out about this research about when you make a loving, caring relationship, the conflicts will drop. And there are all the ways that God treats us. There are all the ways that God treats us. He loves us. He understands our feelings. He appreciates us. And he wants to help us. He says, let me help you. Give, bring, bring all your burdens to me. I want to help you. And he says, I will always be with you. I am eternally committed to loving you because you are my child. Aš amžinai įsipareigojau būti su jumis, nes jūs esate mano vaikai. And he does all these wonderful things for us because he wants to keep this relationship with you and me really strong. Jis daro dėl kiekvieno iš mūsų nuostabių dalykų, nes jis nori, kad tas santykis, tas ryšys tarp manęs ir jo būtų labai stiprus. He is with us, constantly loving us. And he says, believe this, come close to me. I'm here waiting for you because I love you so much. And when you have experienced this incredible love from me, says God, then share it with each other. Love one another as I have loved you. So are there any questions? 
Or shall we pause and we stop the recording? Gerita, do not nest us bakesima. I should shung soup. Irashima? I'm not asking any questions. I'm not hearing anything. Maybe it was all totally clear. Now we just have to go and try it. Ash nigger do you close him more? I miscut Boashko, go with Miscut Boashko, the Baresme at the Risma. Lava Sakras. Klaus at Kas Padada. Because Manas managed to pay that the conflict of Icarus is at the trout. The Shkurishate, Mr. Aminte. Okay, Mr. Aminita, they all yes, quite no good to keep stressed. Victoria, Victoria is telling, uh, maybe when you ask, uh, what helps in conflicts, she's telling that, uh, when she's in conflict, uh, um, uh, she withdraw herself and it helps her. Yes, it's important to do what calms us down and to maybe find a place to so that we can find calm and then think, what do we need to do to mend this still? So not avoid it completely. So calm ourselves and then find what's the best thing to do next. So it's really good, Victoria, to, uh, to know what will help us to calm down so that we can deal with it better. Iš tikrųjų labai gerai, Victoria, žinoti, kas mus nuramina ir tuomet sugrįžti į konfliktą. And remember to try and sort things out before bedtime, because <clears throat> the longer you leave it, the harder it is, and the bigger gap there is between you. Prisiminkime, konfliktus išspręsti prie iki einant negoti. Jeigu mes paliksime konfliktus neišspręstus, kuo toliau tuo sunkiau bus spręsti konfliktus? Because when a couple comes to me and said, we've had an argument and we haven't spoken for three weeks, I know I've got a very difficult job. And neither one of them wants to make a move to heal it. When when they when they stayed away for so long, neither of them want to come and connect. Kai jie ilgą laiką būna atsiskyrę, jie nenori sugrįžti kartu. And then we need to make sure that we don't stay disconnected for so long. Būkime tikri, kad mes nebūtume atsijungę vienas nuo kito ilgą laiką. That the stronger peacemaker can say, we need to talk about this, Let, let's, let's talk, let's find a safe, caring way. Stipresnis taip darys turi pasakyti, kad mums reikia apie tai kalbėti. Pasikalbėkime. Sometimes I get couples to write things down rather than talk, because when they talk, they start to fight. Kartais aš prašau, kad poros užrašytų, tiesiog užrašytų savo mintis, nes kai pradeda kalbėti, jie pradeda kovoti vieną su kitu. So I give them a piece of paper and they agree on the, the conflict in the middle of the paper. The issue. And then I ask them to write their feelings, their ideas, their hopes for solving this. Different things around the bit in the middle. To write everything out that they think. Kad jau žašytų savo viltis, savo. Can you repeat? Uh, um, so I might say, right here, this is important to me because I feel. Ja, svarbu man, užašyti, kad jie žašytų, čia yra svarbu man tai, toliau, ok. Here are my ideas for solving. Čia yra mano mintis. This is my hopes for our relationship. Čia yra mano viltis santykiams. And when they have written everything down, they swap their papers. And then they can read about each other. 
If they have any questions, they write them on a sticky note and put them on the paper. Jeigu jie turi kokiu nors klausimu, jie paima lipdukus, užrašo klausimus ant lipduku ir klijuoja prie kopriaus papo. And they keep passing the paper back with questions and answers and to be understood each other better. Keičiasi. Jie atsimčia vienas kitam popierius lapus, jie skaito klausimus, atsakymus ir taip jie supranta vienas kitą geriau. And it stops them getting into the the loud talking, yelling, escalating way of dealing with things. Ir tada jie išvengia to konfliktų, kuris gali vis didėti ir didėti ir didėti. Sometimes I will get them to swap places and argue as if they are the other person. Kartais aš paprašau jų susikeisti rolėmis ir tarsi jie konfliktuotų, ginčiusi su svetimu žmogumi, visiškai svetimu žmogumi. And that helps them to gain a, a better understanding of what the other person is thinking and wanting. Ir tada jiems padeda geriau suprasti, ką išgyvena tas kitas žmogas. But only do that if you feel that you can manage that. <laughs> jūs galite atdavyti tik tai, jeigu jūs tai sugebėsite suvaldyti. And some people will have a go on their own. Some people prefer to have a therapist with them when they do that. Kartai žmonėms reikalingas terapeutas tarp padėtų. But your relationships are really important, and if there is a lot of conflict, it's important to go and get some help. God wants you to find a way to be a peacemakers together. Santykiai, santykiai, jūsų santykiai yra labai svarbu. Ir kartais, jeigu jums reikia pagalbos, jums reikia kreiptis, ieškotis pagalbos, kas galėtų padėti. And it's better to go and get help for a conflict than to end up being divorced because you haven't got the help when you needed it. Geriau jau eiti pagalbos ieškoti, kad kas nors jums padėtų, negu įsiskirti. So sometimes people say therapy is expensive, but it's not nearly as expensive as a divorce. Kartai žmonės sako, kad eiti pas specialistą yra brangu, bet nėra tiek brangu kaip It's my experience here in the UK that many couple therapists are actually Christians. Čia mano aplinkoje didžioje Britanijoje, kur aš esu, daugumas specialistų, terapeutų yra krikščionis. And they will, they, they want to help you find a way to experience that closeness again. Jie nori padėti žmogui vėl suartėti, patirti tą artumą. But there are also many books and videos and YouTube things that will translate into Lithuanian to help you. So um, the wise thing to do is to get advice and help and learn if you're having a problem. A, iš tikrųjų yra labai daug video medžiagos, knygų, kurios yra išverstos į lietuvio kalbą. Svarbu, kad tai konfliktų metu jūs gautumėt pagalbą. And I know that David S. and Vilma, they have some good ideas that can help as well. Taip pat David S. and Vilma, jie turi tam tikrų gerų minčių, kurios galėtų padėti. Ok, so I hope that you have, think about what you've learned tonight. Pamasykite, ką šį vakarą jūs išmokote. And try putting at least one thing into practice and see what happens. Pabandykite bent vieną dalyką praktiškai panaudoti ir pasižiūrėkite, kaip seks. And then you can ask me all the difficult questions next time we meet. O kitą kartą, kai mes susitiksime, jūs galėsite klausyti pačius ankiausius klausimus manęs. Ok, it's been lovely to be with you. Labai malonu buvo su jumis. And God bless you and I will see you again. Te laimėme jūs dievas. Pasimatysime kitą kartą. I'm not quite sure when, because I'm now traveling for the whole next month, but we will be in touch, Gina. Jo, iš tikrųjų, dėl kito susitikimo mes aptarsime su Gina.